And authorities in Ireland are warning people of it to stay away from that boat. A ghost ship, as it's being called, it's washed up on rocks near Cork on Sunday. The MV alters its name. It became disabled south of Bermuda in 2018 and it's been drifting without a crew for more than a year. Exploring the abandoned MV Alta shipwreck off the coast of Ireland had been spoken about between us ever since its abandonment went global in 2020, with it being one of our biggest dreams to visit. On our recent trip, we finally got the chance to see the iconic vessel for ourselves. In today's Urbandum video, join us throughout the entire expedition to reach the infamous wreckage on a lengthy mission spanning over 8 hours. Remember to click subscribe and press the notification bell to never miss a video. It's done. <laughs> yeah? No, I'll, 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 I'll just say it's something. so awkward. <laughs> this is going to be hard because we don't usually film this sort of stuff, but we thought it would be good to have like a inclusive behind the scenes of our whole trip. Um, whether it will come out all at once or it will be split up, I'm not sure. I don't know. It depends on which we film, but we've just arrived in Holyhead in Wales and we're about to jump on the, uh, the four hour cross into Dublin to start the trip. Yeah. So yeah, um, we'll do a bit of behind the scenes stuff and then... Um, Hopefully it'll be a successful trip. I hope so. And this will actually go somewhere. I hope so. <laughs> Might not even make it, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Just a stroke. style of video than we usually do. We've wanted this one to be a bit more inclusive, um, so that's why there's this strange camera set up at the start of the, the documentary. Um, currently we're in a b and in um, the middle of Ireland and uh, our task for the rest of the day is to head down to this ghost ship that drifted um, for 18, 18 months, almost two years, and then washed up ashore on the coast of Ireland. It's quite a famous ship, it made all the headlines. And today is the day we're going to head to it and hopefully get on board. Um, but it's a long way and it's a, a proper mission. It's going to take us the entire afternoon and maybe a bit of time into the evening as well. But also a scenic one. So how are we, how are we feeling going into this? I'm quite excited. I hope the uh, tide is out so we can... <laughs> that is very out. true, yeah. Yeah, there's a chance it could fail, depending on how the environment is when mm. we get there. But I feel like... Even if we don't get aboard, it's still going to be a really good mission for us. Right? Yeah. The, it's just a nice way to travel, really. Yeah, the journey's going to be really good. But yeah, the tide being out is major because we have, we found out how to follow the time, so we're just going to risk it and head straight there and hope that it's out when we arrive. So we're going to go pick up some food, uh, get some supplies, and start our mission to this abandoned ship. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it goes well. We've done a little bit of research. 
research on the uh, tides in the area and it's currently half past six. The tide was at its highest at 4 pm and it should be at its lowest at 10 pm. Sunsets at about half nine. So we should be okay, I think, to get onto the boat and maybe catch the sunset on the way out. How far away are we now? About 10 minutes out from where we've got to park. Yeah, it's a nice walk on the coast with the cliffs. It'll be quite nice. After driving towards the sea for a couple hours, we eventually arrived at a parking spot in a small residential area closest to the boat, prepared to begin our mission to reach the target. It's a beautiful place for it. Despite having a lot of daylight left, we didn't want to leave any room for mapping errors or unexpected events, particularly knowing of the lengthy trek to the shipwreck. Therefore, we got on with the hike immediately. That's really helpful. It's as if these homeowners know that a lot of people are coming here to see this ship, and they've just been bored of people asking them for directions. Yeah, it is very overgrown. It's safe to say the journey truly begins here. Oh. You expect it to be like this. Be careful, boys. When you get to here, like you step off, you did you dad just oh. do it. I've been stung very badly. Oh my god. It's no surprise that the locals have got probably tired of tourists coming and asking them where this boat is. I feel like um, if you've chosen to live here, you've chosen to live in a remote area and all of a sudden this crazy, almost miracle happens in the most random of places and then you've got news coverage, all of that coming to you, coming to your door wondering like, wh wh where this boat is um, and all the questions in the world you can imagine. It's fascinating though. I bet the news spread locally before it went anywhere else. Oh my god, yeah you can. I was looking at my screen, I couldn't see it for a second. That's our first sighting. You can tell by the fact that it's just sticking over the, uh, the cliffside here that it's going to be a huge vessel. We've seen photos, of course, online of this, but I'm sure it's going to appear much bigger in person. made it round the, the corner of the cliff and we can now see the full scale of the ship. It's so surreal. I know, especially when you know the story behind how it ended up here and the fact that it's still sat in this exact same position after two years. From this point the tide looks low as well, I feel like we'll have a good chance to get on the board. Yeah, it looks like the rocks are definitely clear and I see a clear path up to the side of the ship at least anyway. Everything was going well. With the MV Alta standing prominent in sight, we knew that all we had to do was follow the twisting coastline and we would soon be within touching distance. The picturesque setting was absolutely gorgeous, almost stealing our attention from our prize, now less than a mile away. Bearing down upon it now, had to um, hop off the, the path we were using because um, we noticed that there was a significantly large hole in the barbed wire fence which we think is a, a route where we can get down to the boat 
and we're getting closer and closer. It's just the ferns are getting taller and taller. And there's a big cliff on our left too, so always have to be cautious of that, especially when the ferns are so thick like they are now that you can't see your feet. Just there, there's the cliff edge. Having made it to the destination of the derelict ship, we stared incredulously at its appearance now. An array of storms had cut the ship in a clean half, yet either side was still intact against all odds. We found our descent. Looks like a lot of people have probably used this path, but it's, it's very steep. It won't show on camera, so it's not going to be easy to film walking down, so I'll just try to show our method gain entry or access to the rocks, should I say. at the bottom. It's so destroyed. Now was probably the hardest part I'd say, although I'm not really sure. I think it will be different when we get close. With finding a way onto the boat. From here the left side looks a lot more appealing than the right in terms of access. But we'll see. Got this rocky territory to cross first. It was an extraordinary scene, hopping from jagged rock to rock, waves crashing besides us, gazing up at the colossal wreckage which was drained of its old paint, a ruin of the many journeys it would have undertook. It's really fun trying to find creative ways to film this ship because we have to deal with this landscape and it's, uh, it just makes it a lot more interesting when it comes to finding angles. The cargo carrying ship was constructed in 1976, named Tananga, becoming the altar in 2017, mostly travelling across the Mediterranean Sea. The boat's automatic identification system, which permitted its movements to be tracked, would commonly switch off during the ship's voyages, which is unusual and could indicate involvement in illegal activity. In 2020, the MV Alta ran aground on the shores of County Cork. It had been drifting without a crew for 18 months before suddenly colliding with the bay of its final location. Its history is plentiful, but with many unknown gaps in its timeline, so we will get into that later. Oh God. For now, after working our way around the rock pools of the coast to visualise the vessel from all angles, we figured it was time to see if accessing the destroyed structure was even possible. <laughs> By the water, the moss and seaweed made everything extremely slippy. Thankfully, after some careful choices as to which path we selected, we were able to clamber up to the base of the ship's front. Now we just needed to find a way upwards, without falling into the powerful tide below. Oh my god. This, I think we could do this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shall I try it? Holy shit. Oh my god. 
We had done it. Somehow the rusty metal was very solid, allowing us enough handholds to ascend to the boat's second level, where ladders and staircases could take us the rest of the way. Wow, this is extremely disorientating. And we're finally on. We skipped the first floor because it was very dark down there. Everything appears normal right now. And then I make it level. And you see how strange this is to be on. Crazy. Unbelievable scenes though stood looking into the crack between the ship and its other side. <laughs> when there's someone else up there, if I put it upright, it looks so strange. <laughs> this is so odd. It's disorientating in so many ways. Oh my god. Once the others had also made it on board, we initially reacted to the bizarre feeling on opposing our walk to the ship's lean as well as the storm splitting altar in two, the way it landed on the rocks instills fear that it could eventually tip into the water as its tilt advances every year. Where we are, man. Oh wow, well, that's a nice view to come out and do, isn't it? <laughs> right on the ship's stern. behind us. This is the subject of the major fire that happened here, the cabin and all the staff offices and bedrooms. Very unfortunate because there was a lot of stuff in there. I think the way this is bent in. Very strange going to the edge and to hold on to the ship. Just because of the overhang. It's crazy. Last year, the cabin and admin area of the boat was engulfed in a blaze that is still under investigation by the Irish police force. It's upsetting that we were never able to see the vessel before this occurred, and we were about to inspect the damage caused as we wandered into the fire's heart. It's the burnt section. So awkward to manoeuvre around this boat. Tragic. See the um, beds there. Seen a few videos on this place. None of them have been done too um, insightfully into the ship and looking at every detail. And unfortunately, a lot of these rooms went amiss. They were full of stuff. This one's totally flooded. There's a few things left here. And that's Alex above us. Looks like space for a kitchen. With a massive oven there. Back outside, 
This is in really good condition. Wow. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Still see the extent of the fire damage in this section here. Very freaky when you come down to this bit. You've got this one little bit of banister, and then that. And on the other side, you can see where this would have connected. So the two sides have drifted about apart quite a bit since they split up. Alta was on a voyage from Greece to Haiti, a weird task for a ship of its type and size, which generally stays close to the shoreline. Roughly 2,200 kilometers from the Bermuda Triangle in the Atlantic Ocean, the ship's engines failed, forcing the United States Coast Guard to rescue the 10-member crew and leave the vessel abandoned. Following its vacation, the ship's next moves are uncertain. An unverified report suggests that it was towed to Guyana and possibly hijacked, only to be neglected a second time. Its AI system was not functioning after the ship's crew left, so this might not be the case. It became a ghost and was likely forgotten about for months. A year later, on September 2, 2019, Alta was spotted for the first time. A UK Royal Navy vessel discovered the boat in the mid-Atlantic Ocean. The team attempted to make contact, but no one replied. It was allowed to drift further into Europe, past Spain, and then slowly approached Irish shores. Well, I, I simply couldn't believe it. I was astounded. Um, as I'm a member of the, the lifeboat, I couldn't believe that a boat would get in there without us. Our, our lifeboat had not been launched, or the page was gone off. So I just uh, couldn't understand how such a large vessel was up on the rocks without anybody knowing about it. Six months onward, on the 16th of February 2020, the ship had run aground on the rocks of Cork Island during Storm Dennis. It was in the eyes of the world, making headlines around the globe as a story of a modern day ghost ship, plus the duration it spent floating without a captain had caught the public's curiosity. Many travelled afar to see the spectacle for themselves, causing the boat to be sealed off. Beeping. We just took a little intermission and got some drone shots. Oh, not looking, not liking the floor here. But like everything, it feels completely sturdy for some reason. It's very bumpy. The fire's done so much damage. It has. Yeah, this is really strange. The drone's back above our heads again. Crazy flooded in here. These are just more burnt out rooms for the, uh, the workers. The floors. It's probably all warped because of the fire and the heat that it experienced. Oh, the cabin's completely gone. Cabin may not be the right term. But I think you'd be able to tell what this was. It's 
Must have been the heart of the fire right here. It was unfortunate that the cabin had been burnt of all belongings, some of which remained obliterated, scattered across the floor. The fire had decimated the room, causing the roof to bend inwards and the ground to warp. Although we had completed the exploration of the first half of the ship, before we infiltrated the other side, there was something else we wanted to do. Clutching onto the rusty ladder, the three of us climbed the tilting tower to its peak, unable to leave the location without doing so. Mark them up. What the heck? <laughs> Taking the view. But don't leave me hanging. Oh my god. <laughs> it's incredible, isn't it? were spectacular. It was a paradise for photography, looking down on the defunct vessel with the infinite stretch of coast in the distance. Certain perspectives like this are the main reason we love to explore and see things that stray away from the norm. However, noticing that the daylight was running out rapidly, we fought the urge to stay at the summit of MV Alta forever and found our way down, seeking the opposite end of the boat before sundown. Luckily our small amount of tide research had been correct, and it was heading out, giving us a couple different options to enter the dark chambers of the second half. Using an outstretch of mossy rock, we managed to cautiously mount the rear end and were ready to switch on our torches and begin roaming through.
onto the other ship now, or the other side. I don't think this one has much, but here, this is already really cool. This is the ship's engine. All, or a lot of the components are still there. Just rusting away. Stairs in this one. Still not expecting much. This one feels more tilted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it is a bit. That's the most disorientating staircase yet. I know. I'm struggling to keep my balance on this one. <laughs> it's like it feels like we're drunk. <laughs> There's actually some stuff left here. Probably after they scrapped it. I won't get tired of looking outside and taking in the breathtaking view. Surreal to think that this ship travelled alone for so long and washed up here and they don't even know who owns it. I think that's part of the reason why they can't get rid of it. Fascinating story. I think we feel quite lucky to be here walking around it and exploring it. Some vehicles on this third or second level, I can't remember. Not sure what that one is, but this is a forklift. Probably never going to be used again. We didn't spend too long traversing the interior as there wasn't too much of interest within it. Gladly with the light fading fast, we moved with pace through the vessel, only taking notice of its highlights. Some more fine signs. There's a steep staircase going down. And I've got no free hands with the torch on the camera. This takes us into the room with all the machines that we looked down on a second ago. Got a control panel too. This one's tipped onto this motor. The evidence of seaweed dotted across the ground level engine room implied that during some points of the day this entire space would be submerged beneath the sea. Thinking about this was understandably concerning so we didn't spend too long until we returned to the upper levels of the ship. back on the top. With this being the rear of the ship, it was a lot more open. You can see how steep it gets there. Maybe you can't on camera, but it's quite concerning. It's getting dark fast. Thankfully, there's not much else to do on this one besides taking the stunning views of the sea. And then we'll head off, I guess. This has been probably one of my favourite places we've ever done. Not wanting to risk getting stranded on the boat in the darkness, we decided to leave the wreckage behind us. The whole expedition had been mesmerising and one we will talk about for years to come. 
combining the beautiful scenery, dilapidated abandonment, fascinating history and global attention together made for a truly breathtaking experience. Little has been done for the ship during the time it has been stowed away on the rocky shores of Ireland. It cannot be demolished because the Minister for the Marine can't determine who owns it and charged them for the costs it would take to remove it from the coast, estimated to exceed £10 million. Some reports state that it was flying a Panamanian flag when it was rescued, whilst others insist it was registered in Tanzania. Until that is worked out, MV Alta will crumble and deteriorate more in its new permanent home. Despite the trespass portion of our mission being finished, we've still got a very lengthy 30, 40 minute walk through these ferns on the cliff edge. And now it's by torchlight in the dark. Um, so definitely it's important to keep very cautious here and hopefully we'll make it back in one piece. After the long trapes across the cliff top, we would eventually return to our car. We hope you enjoyed this more immersive look at one of our explorations. Be sure to leave a like if you did. Here are some of our photographs captured at the abandoned ship. If you like the look of them, check out our Instagram page in the description where we share images from our explorers months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. To view our exclusive behind the scenes series from our island trip, visit our Patreon using the link below. You won't want to miss it. See you next time.